Okay, I'm going to show a quick example of how to do integration by parts. And so I'm going to integrate x times cosine of x dx. And uh, when you do this, you have to select two things. You have to select a u and you have to select a dv. So I'm going to use uh, u is x and I'm going to use that uh, dv is cosine of x and then dx. Um, and the choice that I made was uh, you usually want to select uh, u so that if you had to take repeated derivatives, eventually um, the derivative would go to zero. That's not always going to work, um, but if, if it's an option, you should make that choice. Um, so that tells me that du is dx and v is sine of x. Okay, so um, I take the derivative of u and I take the antiderivative of dv um, to get these. Um, I didn't put in a plus c, I'm going to put in one giant plus c at the very end of the whole process. And then um, for integration by parts, I'm doing uh, uv minus the integral of v du. So that's going to be um, x sine of x minus the integral of um, sine of x dx and then I can integrate that x sine of x minus um, the integral of sine is negative cosine so negative cosine of x and then I'll put a plus c so I get x sine of x plus cosine of x plus C, which is my final answer on that. Um, and what I've done is I have uh, basically found an antiderivative for this thing. So I made a selection of u, and my choice for u was um, I was either going to choose x or I was going to choose cosine of x. Um, if you make the wrong selection for u, uh, the integral just ends up harder. And you'll know that pretty much immediately. Everyone recognizes a more difficult integral. Um, and then dv is whatever is left over. So usually you decide what u is going to be. Um, in the event that you can't decide what u would be, um, make your choice so that you actually know how to find the antiderivative. So I wouldn't have chosen something that I didn't know how to find an antiderivative of for dv because then I wouldn't be able to go through the process. Um, so that's a first example, and I will do one more before I move on to uh, a different type of integration by parts. This is actually a, a pretty typical example. I mean, it's probably the standard example of uh, what I'm about to do. So again, I need to pick a u, um, and I need to pick a dv. But the weird thing is that there only appears to be one thing, right? Uh, all I have is natural log of x. I definitely know how to take the derivative of that, so I'm going to make that be u. Uh, that's natural log of x. And then what's left over? Well, the only thing left over is dx. Um, so occasionally this will happen. And now um, du is 1 over x dx. And v is just x. And so from here, what I'm going to do is, again, uh, integration by parts is u v minus the integral of v du. So I end up with x natural log of x minus the integral of v, which is x, and then du. So 1 over x dx, x ln of x minus uh, the integral of dx, which is x, natural log of x, minus x, and then finally I put a plus c. So I hold off on the plus c until the end because it's just too messy otherwise. Um, and that is my final answer. So this is a, a slightly different technique where maybe you wouldn't be immediately thinking integration by parts, um, but you know, you look at it, you don't know how to integrate natural log of x, um, although I do recommend you memorize this antiderivative, but um, you don't know how to do it, so you have to make selections. There's really only one choice for you, it's natural log of x. What's left over? dx, so that becomes your uh, dv. And uh, that's how I would do that. So that's two good examples of integration by parts, and I hope you find that helpful.